It's not a secret that relationships with other people is the hardest part of life. But there is something that makes relationships not just difficult, but absolutely impossible. It's when we're not in reality within our relationships, and it happens more often than you think. I want you to imagine that there's a person in a prison cell. There's no way for them to get away from that prison cell, and the reality of being inside the prison cell is just too much for them. When this is the case, imagine that a coping technique that they use is a game of pretend. They start to create a fantasy, an overlay, if you will, that makes that prison a palace. The person who brings food to the cell every day is a servant, the walls are not the stone of a prison, they're the stones of a medieval castle, and the bars are pillars. The mind has a capacity to play pretend to such a degree that every element of reality can be seen as a different element in our own game of pretend. But this game is not really a game, because your mental and emotional survival depends on it. This pretend reality sits over actual reality like an overlay. Most every one of us is going to understand what this overlay is like because we pretended as children. When we were children, it wasn't very difficult if we were being the knight in shining white armor to imagine our dog was an actual dragon. Childhood is such a uniquely powerless experience. Children don't have control over other people in their reality, especially adults. They don't have much control over changing reality into what they want it to be like. You know, the family decides to move and it's not like the kid has a say in it. They're just going to be moved anyway. So if we experienced extreme degrees of powerlessness, to that degree we tended to play games of pretend. But for some of us, this game of pretend went far beyond just a childhood game of pretend. Other people may have thought that we were in reality when in fact we were seeing reality through the lens of our own overlay. Here's the thing. An overlay can be a coping mechanism that wreaks havoc in our adult life. Why? This game of pretend goes well beyond a fun game of pretend. It becomes literally the only reality that we are interacting with. Now that's an issue because obviously if we're not in reality we can't change anything about actual reality. And so when we're old enough to actually have the capacity to change elements of our life, we don't do it. An overlay is an extremely dangerous thing, especially in relationships and in adult life, because we don't see reality. We could be headed towards a cliff, but we're convinced it's a pretty horizon line. In other words, overlays make us commit to something that isn't real. Now eventually, it becomes obvious, as reality always does, that we are in an overlay. It becomes obvious that reality isn't actually what we're perceiving. And so when this overlay begins to corrode, we kind of fall through the holes in that overlay, down into a reality that absolutely, completely sucks. Here's the reality. Many of us are living a very painful reality relative to relationships. We're lonely. We don't have what we really want, that vision. Maybe it's the perfect family. Maybe it's that place where you can really belong. Our commitment is to that picture, that vision of what we want. There's nothing wrong with creating that as long as we're creating it in reality. The danger is that this picture of what we want can become an overlay. It can be what prevents us from seeing reality. When this is the case, when we meet someone, we ignore all the red flags that are telling us that in reality this person does not match the vision of what we want. Instead, we become like casting directors, where what we want is actually the game of pretend that we are playing on the stage of life. We are simply trying to pick the person who acts the most like they could play the character in our vision of our life that we want. Any sign that we get that suggests that they could play that character well makes us convinced that they are actually that character in reality, but the truth is, they're not. We're not in love with the actual person. We're in love with the character we want them to play in our life. When they act in character, we approve of them. When they break from character, we disapprove of them and try to criticize them back into character. One of the best examples of this that I've ever seen of this overlay versus reality relationship in action is the relationship between the student Betty Warren and her new husband in the movie Mona Lisa Smile. We are also so desperate for relationships and so desperate to be wanted by somebody else and loved that we try to become the character in someone else's overlay so as to be loved. We're kind of like chameleons. And this always backfires as well. Why? Because we cannot keep up the act forever. So eventually, 
we break from character, and it's a recipe for disaster because the other person is going to feel completely duped by us. And we're going to feel like no one loves me for who I really am. When we are engaged in an overlay instead of reality in a relationship, it usually begins to wear off when the limerence phase of a relationship begins to wear off. That's when we start to see the breaks or the holes on our overlay. It's sort of like a film strip sitting over reality and there are suddenly holes that are burning in the film strip. And every so often you catch a glimpse of that horrific reality that you would never want to have be true, but is the actual reality of the situation. It's at this point when you start to see those holes forming in the overlay where you can see glimpses of the reality underneath and eventually fall all the way through it to what actual reality is that you start to think about all those red flags you ignored to begin with. And at this point, you're pretty much really regretting that you ignored those flags. Because the reality that you're sitting in is one of loneliness and pain. Potentially an even worse reality than you were in before you got into the relationship. When we don't see people clearly and feel them and understand them and really, really perceive the reality of them and even watch the red flags, what we're doing is we're not in a relationship with the real person, we're in a relationship with an overlay. Now, many people on the planet today, I mean, a lot of them, are actually having relationships entirely in the overlay. They're not actually having a relationship in reality at all. Now, this should scare the crap out of you. This is the adult version of two four-year-olds that are playing house, but who are completely convinced that reality is putting the baby to bed, going shopping, and living in the playhouse. If you're the kind of person who has an intense vision for what you want and are desperate to get it, like so desperate that you cast characters as actors in the vision, whose actual real personalities and authentic truths do not match the characters themselves, the unfortunate reality is that you will be a match to people who do the same thing, and will therefore cast you as a character in their vision who is nothing like the real you. You will also be a match to people who pretend the reality of them is the same as the character you want them to play in your vision, when the truth of them is quite the opposite. You will end up in relationships where genuine incompatibility exists. For more information about this, watch my video titled Incompatibility, A Harsh Reality in Relationships. You will also end up in a relationship based mostly on potential. To understand more about this, watch my video titled Priceless Relationship Advice. People are really confused about love and sex addiction. To be honest with you, the majority of experts on love and sex addiction have absolutely no idea what's really creating it. What sex and love addiction is, is actually an addiction to overlay. Now, like any addiction, it's basically an attempt to get out of pain. So it's not about the addiction to whatever it is itself, it's about that is the strategy that was found to get away from the pain of the wound that is underneath the addiction. In the case of sex and love addiction, it is an extreme isolation, an extreme lack of emotional needs being met. And when we have no way of dealing with that, one of the only ways to deal with it, as we saw in the prison scenario, is to pretend your way out of it. Love and sex addicts tend to attach to people instantaneously because of they're not really in a relationship with the reality of a person themselves. They're in a relationship with the character in their own overlay, which is a character they're so desperate for and a character that they know all too well. But love and sex addiction is just the far end of the scale of what most people actually on earth do, which is to get into a relationship with something that doesn't actually exist, to be outside of reality instead of inside reality in a relationship. If we want to create the kind of life we want to be living, we have to do something that's quite difficult for us. We have to create a kind of cognitive dissonance state within us where we are holding two often contradictory perspectives. The first is reality, what is. The second is what we want, that vision. Chances are you already know what you want. Chances are, you're the kind of person who knows what you want and want it so desperately that you are more trending towards the direction of somebody who sees that something is what you want when it really isn't what you want. You just want it to be what you want so badly. So the majority of the emphasis that I'm going to put on this education in this video provided is on figuring out how to see reality. So often we are so desperate for what we want, we're like a person dying of thirst. We'll ignore the warning signs and drink poisoned water. 
So obviously staying out of this pattern is about learning to see reality even when it breaks your heart to do it. Even when it feels like you have to say no to water when you're dying of thirst. To get into reality we have to try to see all of the situation, all of who someone is, both good and bad. We have the tendency when we are engaged in overlay to sweep anything that contradicts our vision under the rug. We allow ourselves to be spun by someone's words as well, instead of the way they feel energetically and the way they act. So here are some ways to get into reality about a situation and about someone. 1. Put the person or put the situation itself on mute. You can either do this in the mind's eye as a visualization where you're looking back at some circumstance involving this person or the situation, or you can find some way to prevent your hearing while you're actually watching the person. And I want you to ask yourself, if I was just a neutral observer that knew nothing about this person or this circumstance, and I was literally asked to sit down and just watch this silent movie, what would my perception of reality actually be? Words, they can lie, but energy and actions do not lie. So it's really important to put things on mute so you can see the actual reality that is hiding beneath those words. For example, a person may say, I love you more than anything, I'm completely here for you. But when you put them on mute, you may notice they're completely focused on their computer or other projects, and there is seldom a moment where they are actually focused on you. <laughs> Two, when you perceive a red flag, a red flag being, of course, something that happens in a situation or with a person that makes you think for a minute, maybe this is really not the perfect picture of what I want. When you feel that hit in your stomach of that fear or that potential disappointment and even desperation that arises at, oh my gosh, that doesn't fit in with this, this picture that I have in this vision, don't sweep it under the rug. Use that as a, a bell, basically, that is ringing in your psyche saying, wait, 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 you gotta pay attention to this. For example, one of my clients was at a dinner on a date with a man who was describing how in his previous marriage, before he decided to get a divorce, he had had several affairs. Now, he obviously was able to spin the story so that he was the victim. It was really good that he did this. Why? Because he was so starved emotionally in the relationship, X, Y, Z. Because he made himself out to be a victim, it made sense to this woman. She ignored the red flag, that feeling that came up in her stomach and said, wait, this doesn't feel right. Now, obviously, she regretted that when a few years later, after they were married, he cheated on her and did the exact same thing. He told the woman who he had an affair with that he wasn't even married. And more than that, told her that it was obviously, once this person found out, the wife's fault because he was so starved to death by her, even though none of this was communicated in the relationship. Now, you can bet that when that happened, she was really kicking herself for the fact that she hadn't noticed that that red flag was actually a red flag. Three, try to observe somebody when they are not aware that they are being observed. People are interesting when they know they're being watched. They change their behavior. They act in a way that they know will get them approval and acceptance and so that they'll be perceived the way they want to be perceived. But to really see somebody is to see them when no one's watching. That's when their guard is down. That's when you get to see who they really are. Four, you gotta start to notice patterns. If we have asked somebody to change something about themselves or about their behavior towards us because it's hurting us, and we notice that the pattern continues and they don't really change, there's a point at which we have to come to reality, which is that they're probably never gonna change. What we are seeing is what we're gonna get. This is the reality of them. We need to accept and take action accordingly rather than get caught in the cycle of constantly trying to fix them into being a match to our overlay. Five, let go immediately of the idea that somebody can heal into becoming the perfect person that fits our overlay or our vision. This is literally a recipe for disaster, and so many of us get into relationships with this idea. We see the potential inherent in somebody, and we feel as if we can be their savior or their salvation. We can rehabilitate them into being exactly what they want them to be. And trust me, they won't appreciate it. The vision that somebody can be healed into matching our overlay is still us only engaging in our overlay, our vision, and not even really seeing them. We have no idea if it's what they really want, and I can guarantee you something. If somebody really wants to change something about themselves or really wants to heal in some way, you're not going to have to cajole them into doing it. They're going to take the initiative completely on their own without you even trying to do anything. So you need to ask yourself the question in relationships. 
or in situations. If I was to commit myself to this exact thing as it is today, could I do that? Knowing it would never change. Six, trust your feelings. Your feelings and your intuition are always a very powerful representative of your personal truth. I want you to imagine that somebody has inserted a rod straight through your crown chakra, right down through the core of your body, kind of running along the inside of your spine. Your personal truth is going to show up as sensations and messages closest to that rod. You could consider this rod your core. When you're not sure about reality or truth, sit down, close your eyes, and be unconditionally present with whatever is occurring close to that rod. After a time, you can ask it questions relative to the situation or person in question and see how it responds. Even when we commit to maintaining an open mind, we have to do so with a firm grasp on our personal truth, and we must trust the feelings and intuitions that come as messengers of that personal truth. 7. Don't look just at how someone treats you. This is a huge mistake that we make because when we're in somebody's favor, we love to feel like we're that special without thinking about the fact that maybe one day we won't be. What we have to pay close attention to is how this person treats other people, how this person treats children and animals, and how this person treats their opponents and rivals and enemies. Because there is no guarantee that one day they won't turn you into one. In other words, there is no guarantee in a relationship that someone won't treat you like other people. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I counseled a woman who married a high-powered executive CEO type of man. Now this man, she had to watch for years belittling other people, playing vicious zero-sum games, and playing everybody in his business life like a very dangerous game of chess, always for his benefit. Sometimes she had to apologize for him, in fact. But she told herself the story, this could never be me on the other side of that, because after all, this is not business, and I'm his wife. It wasn't until that relationship started to corrode that she got to see the harsh reality, which was that she was going to be treated exactly like he treated other people in that business transaction. The second that that relationship dissolved, she was no longer his wife. She was a business rival. She had to accept the very harsh reality that every single move he made financially in their marriage was to put himself at an advantage and to put her at a disadvantage in the event of divorce. He had been playing a chess game to keep his own best interests secure in case they split up, and soon she found herself losing everything she had thought they built together. As if there never was a marriage, he switched into treating her with the old, same, calculating, zero-sum, cold game approach as a business rival. Long story short. When it comes to seeing people in reality, seeing how they treat strangers, treat other people, treat your friends, treat children, treat animals, and treat rivals, is everything. 8. We all come into our relationships with blind spots and biases. This is because we all come into relationships with life experience. Obviously, based on our life experience, some of us are not going to see things that other people see. And we're also going to have strong biases towards things and strong projections. To understand more about projection, watch my video titled Projection, Understanding the Psychology of Projection. For example, let's say we grew up with a narcissistic father. Chances are we're so used to this being the way that relationships go that we're not even going to recognize a narcissistic man when he comes into our life. We're going to think it's normal. Other people may see that person go, yikes, my gosh, I can't stand the way that they're acting. But for us, it's normal, so it's a blind spot. Or, for example, let's say that we had a mother who was suicidal and highly volatile emotionally. We may get into a relationship with another woman who's highly volatile and emotional. But we may be telling ourselves we're going to get just as hurt with this person as we were hurt with mom. Well, maybe it's not really the case. That's a case of projection. We can't see the person clearly for who they really are or who they aren't because we're projecting our concept of mom onto them. When we have these blind spots, it is a good idea to involve other people's perspectives as well as to develop awareness in the areas where our blind spots and projections exist. 9. Take the time to get to know somebody. Treat this process like a touch-and-go type of relationship. You walk a tiny bit into the water, and based on that, you get more information that tells you whether to move deeper or not. If you move deeper, it gives you more information that tells you whether to move deeper or not. 
Now, obviously, doing this if you're desperate for relationships is really, 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 really hard. It's a little bit like putting a rice bowl in front of somebody who's starving to death and saying, just eat one rice grain at a time. It's also exhausting and desperate to think of the idea of putting your energy into somebody to a degree where you realize, oh crap, this is bust, and having to pull out and start all over from scratch again. But I can promise you, it is four million times better than ending up committing 100% to shark waters. It's a hundred times better than getting yourself all the way in to a situation that is extremely difficult to get all the way out of, where there are casualties involved. In other words, even though it's torturous to sip water when you're starving, it's better than getting so poisoned that you can't get up off the floor. Make sure before you commit to a partnership or commit to fully trusting someone that you have seen them in their good times and in their bad times. Make sure you have seen that they will consistently take your best interests as part of their own best interests. Make sure that you really see, hear, feel, and understand the reality of who they are right here and now if nothing were to positively change about them. Sometimes you're going to have to take risks in life. You're going to hear me teaching about this all the time. Sometimes you will have to move forward with your fear. But sometimes moving forward despite your fear is just happening because we are ignoring reality. And it's us being dumb instead of brave. It is in our best interest to discern the difference, to figure out whether we are in reality or whether we are in an overlay. Because unless we are able to get into reality and really admit to it, regardless of how painful it is, we will never be able to create the real life we want in reality. Instead, we will be condemned to never really seeing, feeling, hearing, or touching other people and we will be condemned to them never really feeling, hearing, touching, or understanding us. Why? Because we will only ever be characters in each other's overlay. Have a good week.